Right. Final talk of the day, and then you can get back to playing all your games and doing what you want, so I'll be kind of quick. Um, this is also going to be fairly experimental for me. I'm going to attempt to do something which I've never tried to do in front of people before. But before then, I'm going to quickly talk about what is chip music and why is it great. I think it's great anyway, and I'm going to try and convince you that it's great. So, quickly, who I am. That's me showing off. Um, Look at the guitar. Yeah. It's not a console. It's not a console. That's an no. I play music as uh, Alone, which is uh, just the name which comes out when I think about names for things. Um, I make music using games consoles and other retro hardware, but majority of the time I make music using a NES. In fact, my very NES, which I use, is that one there. So if you're wondering why it's got stickers on it and also funky audio outputs on the back, it's because I put them there. Um, so, also, please be careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I also use a uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Uh, I made music using these things. And there's also a big scene of people out there using lots of retro hardware. So pretty much every console in front of you on the TVs and the computers behind you are still being used today by creative people to make music and other artwork as well, video and games still in some cases, but visuals, music, all this sort of stuff, hacking into them, making them make weird noises and stuff like that. And dubstep makes all the best. Make dubstep remixes of everything. It's brilliant. And the reason why is that these are simple machines when you get right down to it. I can make music on my phone today, I can make music on an iPhone, I can make music on my PC at home and I can use Ableton Live and I've got access to the world of sound. I can sample an orchestra, which I have never actually done because I'm lazy, but I could have a samples of orchestra, I can have full drum kits, I can be a prog band if I wanted to, I could create sweeping cinematic music if I wanted to, using just my computer, and this is brilliant. I'm not saying this isn't. You can make sounds which the mind cannot comprehend to start with. You can be Skrillex and stand on top of things, fist pumping while everything destroys itself in front of you. <laughs> Beautiful, amazing stuff. I will not rubbish on any of that. However, some people, like myself, like things a little bit simpler, a bit more restriction in some cases, because through restrictions, you are actually bound to be more creative. You can work within your means. And using these games consoles, they've got tiny processors. This is a uh, chip inside of... I'm going to give you a guess. Which console is this inside of? SNES? No. 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 Oh, it's a Sony audio chip inside of SNES, actually. It is a Sony audio chip. It's a NES. It's it, says, a NES. it says that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Clues on it. <laughs> this is inside. <laughs> 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 See what you see. It's the uh, 2A07A chip. Uh, there is another, this is the PAL version of the chip. There is an NTSC version of the chip, which has got a slightly different code, which I don't know. But then there are two little pins off this chip, and if you want to see some chips which have been DIY soldered into it, have a look at the homebrew computer, which is just on the table behind there. It's gorgeous inside, it's fantastic, and it makes me go, ooh, I wonder where I can find the audio. These two little pins give the NES five audio channels out. So that's just five sounds playing at any one time. Not 64, which you will find in most new computers. Five channels, and it's all being processed on that little chip. Now, what chip musicians do is you need a bit of quality out of these things. So this is from a tutorial which I wrote up. Circle these two, because if you then solder two pins to them, solder your audio outputs onto that, you get pro quality sound, which can be amplified and not electrocute anyone. So it's quite nice, and that's what I did to that NES there. So that's inside there. <clears throat> and then you need something to control it with, and thankfully this is where modern technology comes in a little bit more handily. You can just have programs running off original NES cartridges. There are homebrew cartridges out there which have allow you to sequence sounds, sequence drum beats, sequence synthesizers, all of that sort of stuff. However, if you want to get a little bit more musical and uh, flex your more standard uh, ways of doing things, this is a, called a MIDI NES cartridge, which is what I use, which allows you to plug in any standard MIDI controller into it. 
So I personally, I program everything in and then run it afterwards. But you can play it like a keyboard, which is beautiful. And there's, as I said, a whole scene of musicians out there doing this. I didn't actually put their names on here, which is very silly of me. Uh, but this band here, uh, called Anamanaguchi, love this band. Um, they are based in New York. They make rock music and sort of like a bit like a pop punk Weezer, but using Inez as the backing music to all of it. Another band called Infinity Shred. They've got all fantastic names, by the way. Uh, Infinity Shred create epic sweeping soundscapes fronted with guitar and drums as well, alongside those retro sounds, which is a beautiful mix, which is what I try and do. But if you don't want to listen to me make music, listen to them, because they do it better. So, anyway. Uh, and finally, this chap at the bottom is a guy called Pixel Hate, and he programs his own cartridges to make music. And he's worked with artists such as Bjork, Damon Albarn, adding these sounds. And you can actually hear them in little snippets in, uh, I think, the first Gorillaz album you can hear it. You can also hear in Imogen Heap's first album, all these Game Boy sounds from his software. He also does lectures around, so uh, if you do get a chance to see him lecturing or playing live, I do recommend it because he's based in the UK. And there is a big scene of people doing this. There are festivals, fest whole days, two days. Superbike is running in uh, Manchester this summer, uh, September. Um, so Superbike 2014 is up in Manchester. Two days of chip musicians all playing music off Game Boys, all playing music off Commodore 64s, Spectrums, etc. Um, Blip Festival, it sadly has actually now finished, but there are still, was a big festival in New York in 2011. I'm going to show off a little bit. I went in 2011. I flew to New York with the, actually the sole purpose of going to see chip music. So it was a little bit insane, but it was brilliant and I loved it. And surprisingly good times. Yeah, well, not surprisingly, it was brilliant. Uh, one of my favourite ever things to have done. You can now watch documentaries about this. This is Reformat the Planet. This is a documentary about a lot of the Americans and international people making chip music. And goes into a bit about the visuals as well. It's a fantastic documentary. And if you want to get a little closer to home, there are Europe in 8 bits, which you can pay for streaming off Vimeo. Uh, give it a Google, and uh, I think it's only a couple of pounds just to watch this documentary about European chip artists. Sorry, um, what did you say with Colin Moore? That's called Reformat the Planet. Right. Sorry, I think I actually missed that. But yes, uh, it's out on DVD, and I think you can get it streaming. And. As you may have noticed, like going back to almost what Mog was saying about people creating new programs, new software, and things on iPhones, things on Raspberry Pis, these things often hark back to the sounds and the graphics of the 90s, the early, early, 80s, early 80s, late 80s. So when games come out such as Fez here and Super Hexagon, which are harking on these retro like visuals and gameplay, they are also then using re uh, retro sounding music, such as chip music. So uh, the composer for uh, Super Hexagon was an uh, Irish lady called Chipzel, who makes fantastic music as well. I highly recommend her stuff. And a guy called Disaster Piece did the soundtrack to Fez, which is a another beautiful game. And if you haven't had a chance to play it, it just came out on all PlayStation platforms and things. So. I recommend that one at the very least. And this is what I'm going to attempt to do now. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and make some music in front of you, and it won't be particularly good music, but I'll try and talk through what I'm doing to give you a taste of what it is. I'm going to use a program called NanoLoop, and because I don't have a fancy camera with a video feed or anything showing you what I'm doing, um, this is, I'm going to try and use this. So, running on this Game Boy Advance is a special cartridge called, I'm going to reboot it just because it makes a nice noise. This cartridge is called NanoLoop. It's designed by a guy called Oliver in the Netherlands. Uh, this is NanoLoop 2.5, which is for the Game Boy Advance rather than the original Game Boy. So it actually has access to a bit more than uh, the 4-bit sounds of the Game Boy the original one. This one is actually a 32-bit, but it does use a lot of the same principles. So let's boot it up and see if you've got Oh, no, it's not working now. Okay. 
So while that boots up, this uses a sequencer which has got 16 steps on it. And as the sequencer works its way through, for every one of those steps it will make a sound. So while it boots up still. So the first thing you see when you start this up, actually, come on, is a looping screen. I don't know whether you can see that, but it just looks like this, simple interface, and you've only got six buttons to work with and a directional path. So the first thing that you need to do is put your notes in. So luckily they start with C. So that's just a very standard, and I'm going to quickly say the sound which this makes is a square wave which is coming off there, which looks like that when you put it through an os oscillos oscillos uh, oscilloscope. It can make sine waves, which are sounds which go up and down, and square waves, which is what you can hear right now, triangle waves, which are sort of similar but have a slightly different tone, and you can make sawtooth waves as well, which rise and then drop off. So at the moment I've got four channels to play with with this. It's a beautiful melody, I know. <laughs> had an amazing response to this. Um, we're, you know, we're really delighted with how many people have come 
and how many smiles we've seen on people's faces today as, as they've been playing around. So that's the first thank you. Um, then the second thank you is to anybody and everybody who has loaned or donated pieces of equipment, objects, items to make this happen because without those people we, we wouldn't have such an amazing selection of our recent technological past here to appreciate and get all kind of misty eyed and nostalgic about. There are a few donators here in the room, thank you very very much to those of you who have given things and also some people who have loaned stuff here as well, other people have left already. We, you know, we, we don't want to leave anybody out in terms of the thanks there. Um, and just very, very quickly, a quick word about the project that has put this on. It's Get Count Philly Online. We're not too obvious, actually, with all the branding, which is just quite a nice change, really. Um, but our role, what we do outside of this, is we go about trying to help people get online in the first place and then get more out of being online, whether they're you know, an individual or community organisation or whatever it is. Um, there are 40,000 people in Carfilly who still are digitally excluded. And we've got a room full of people that are really quite enthusiastic about technology here today. So I just, whilst explaining the project and raising awareness of who it is that's brought it together, I thought it would also be a good opportunity to encourage you all to go away and be enthusiastic about technology with anybody who's a bit reluctant because the internet is of huge benefit to all of us, who, whoever we are. And if anybody is not online, then they stand to benefit a huge amount. So kind of, you know, if, if we can all do that little bit and kind of hit, you know, one or two of the 40,000, then it really is going to be making a huge impact across the county. Um, so that's it. That's the, the, the official project line done and dusted there. Um, thank you. I hope you've all had a ton of fun looking and poking and playing with all of this stuff. We've had a blast putting it together. Thank you particularly to all of the members of staff that have really, really pitched in and helped with this. James, in particular, has put a huge amount in. Mark has carried, I don't know how many televisions in this weather. <laughs> yes. Everybody has done a huge amount on the team. And, I, you know, Isabel Craig, we're all here. And I think, you know, we've managed to put on a really super event. 